While I did say that the Universal Century is the fattest chunk of the Gundam IP, it's not actually the deepest Gundam related rabbit hole you can fall into. Pound for pound, the widest and most in-depth portion of the Gundam IP has got to be the Gundam Plastic Models, or Gunpla for short. First released in the 1980s, this fun little activity has since spread around the world and can be found in toy and hobby stores in most cities. Known for its detailed and clever designs, Gunpla has sold nearly 750 million units, and to this day, new assembly kits are made improving and reiterating on itself. Today, I'll give you the Dummy's Guide to the Gundam Building, which much like the previous parts of this overall series, we won't be looking at each and every part of Gundam Building, and instead focus on the main points to build a baseline of understanding. There are bigger and better channels out there that you can burn the midnight oil that goes more in depth with specific Gunpla models, tools of the trade, and everything in between. Like most products, to be able to enjoy them, you must first start by purchasing them. Buying a Gunpla model is much like buying a good book. We judge the product by looking at the front and back. However, while to an experienced buyer and builder, everything seems crystal clear, to a first-time buyer, you'll find that it says a lot while also not saying anything. Let's pull up an example Gunpla box as an example. If you properly follow the dummy's guide so far, you probably recognize the specific Gundam, as it is the Destiny Gundam from Gundam C Destiny. Let's take a look at some of the elements on the box to tell us what kind of information we can gather. First off, we have the name. All boxes will have the name of the specific mobile suit that the final assembly will create. Next, we can find the Gundam C Destiny logo. Oftentimes, if the mobile suit in question has made an appearance in some other form of media, you'll find a corresponding notation or logo referencing that appearance. As expected, the Destiny Gundam made its appearance in Gundam C Destiny. The final and most important thing to look out for is its grading, whose mark you can find usually in big capitalized letters, and sometimes again in smaller writing, with numbers behind it. As you can see on our example box, this one is HG, or high grade, and it's 1 to 144. We'll dive deeper into that a little bit later, but all you need to know is, is that the larger that number is, or the smaller the number after the 1 is, the larger the final product will be, and the more complex the entire construction process will take. Finally, the last thing we should take a look at is the art itself. Although the end product will probably not have the particles and explosions around it, the equipment that the mobile suit holds is usually there for a reason. In this example, we see the Gundam holding a blaster and a few other accessories that are a little more hidden. For the most part, if you see the blaster, you can almost guarantee that there will be a blaster piece that you can use to accessorize your model with. Although for some it may look like excess pieces, for avid collectors and builders, more pieces is always better than less pieces. With that quick rundown, let's quickly take a look at another box just to get accustomed to it. Let's pull up a different box as an example. So here is a new one, and what can we quickly find? The name is written in big and reveals this to be the Buster Gundam. Now, where have we seen this model before? Ah, uh, why, there it is, the Gundam Seed. This time it's a little more subtle, not having the entire logo, but it's there. Then we see MG, or Master Grade. We'll come back to what that means a little bit later. Uh, we see on the art that the Gundam is holding its trademark Super Soaker. So we can expect that piece to be in the box. So look closely, as mistaking these details can make a long afternoon quickly become a month-long endeavor. Like a kid in the candy store, picking Gunpla can be a deeply complicated matter. For the most part, people pick the box they want to work on by recalling their favorite moments in some other media, by picking them up by how neat their design is, or how much of a challenge they want. Let's talk quickly about the first two. Remember that not every Gundam kit has to derive from a show. If you recall the Gundam Seed Destiny Astray manga, you'll find that you can find that flagship Astray model too if you are a fan of those books. On the other hand, you can really pick something strictly for how neat it looks. For example, I really like the F91's look, even if I overall didn't care for the F91 movie. We've danced around it for a bit, but let's talk a bit about the grades. So far we've seen HG and MG, or high grade and master grade, but what does that really mean? Well, for the most part, Gundam comes in about 6 to 7 different grades, which on average dictate on how large, how difficult, and how expensive the product is. Do note that due to the long history of Gunpla products, there have been other grades that have come in and out, but for our purposes as a beginner level guide, this is just enough. Starting off, we have SD, or Super Deform which are essentially the Funko Pops of Gunpla models. The size of these vary quite a bit, as they can be almost keychain size to a hefty chunk of plastic. You can recognize these as the head of the model is often much larger proportionally to the rest of the body, much like Funko Pops. 
Next we find what most would consider the baseline of Gunpla models, HG or high grade, usually scaled at a 1 to 144 ratio. This is the most straightforward and most representative of Gunpla building. They often come with a good series of accessories that the model in question is known to carry around and even comes with decals to give additional detail to your creation. In terms of most popular grade of model, if HG is side A, then side B is definitely RG or real grade. Although size-wise, RG models are for the most part the exact same as HG models, they often have more parts which allows the end product to be more detailed than its HG counterpart. As an example, here are the legs of the exact same Gundam model, the RX-78 II, in both high grade and real grade. Size-wise, they're actually the same, but you can see that there is a little bit more, but still distinguishable amount of detail on the right-hand real grade one. Moving up, we reach MG or Master Grade, whose typical scale raises to 1 to 100, making it notably larger than both high or real grade models. Surprisingly, although larger, Master Grades can actually be simpler or on par with the previous looked at grades. The reason is that Master Grades nowadays come with a skeletal frame and the task comes down to placing those parts onto that frame, which significantly cuts down on the work time. The last standard grade is PG or Perfect Grade. These are considered as the top of the line for most people, coming in even larger than Master Grade at a scale of 1 to 60. These are intended for those who had some building experience already. In the attempt to make it as detailed as possible, these sometimes move away from the typical philosophy of clippers only, including metal bits or even special lighting features, such as in the case of the Gundam Unicorn, to recreate the glowing veins. The last one I want to talk about is MSM, or Mega Size Model, which are the largest product available for most people, and they come at a 1 to 48 scale. That said, to get to that size, they often sacrifice detailing, so you can kind of imagine this as an upsize. So to recap, size-wise, from smallest to largest, we have SD, HG, RG, MG, PG, and MSN. Detailing and amount of work-wise, from easiest to hardest, we have, and this is more debatable, it varies from box to box and on whether you have fat fingers like me or not, SD, HG, RG, MG, MSM, and PG. To be upfront, this is the part that I am the least adept with. As a person that is not particularly artistically inclined and combined with my fat fingers, I have found that building Gunpla is more of a self-imposed challenge for my own sense of pride and accomplishment. As such, if you want to get nitty gritty with the best possible, there are dozens of bigger and better channels dedicated to Gunpla models and the building process. However, for the most part, you can actually build the model themselves with nothing more than some clippers. There are brand name or even pro level clippers out there, but I found that the lowest dummy level a clipper from the hardware store which costed me about $3 to have been perfectly serviceable. Although on paper a clipper is all you need, some other tools worth considering are a nail file to buff out the badly clipped plastic and markers or paint for aesthetic touches. At the end of the day, Gunpla building is a personal project. Whether you want to make it a one and done deal or a pursuit of perfection is really your call. But if you are a fan of other model and figure making like Warhammer, D&D, or even Lego, then Gunpla may just be another avenue of addiction. In the same way that other toys have had tie-in shows such as the Beyblade series, the Yu-Gi-Oh series, or even the Battle Beatemon series, in more recent years Gundam has tried to also represent their Gunpla in some shows. Their first major attempt was with Model Suit Gunpla Builders Beginner G, which apart from having a terrible name, came out to celebrate the 30th anniversary of Gunpla. Following up on its relatively good reception came Gundam Build Fighters and its sequel Gundam Build Fighters Try. The premise of these were relatively the same in that Gunpla models were able to come to life and fight it out akin to Beyblade or Metabots. There is also Gundam Build Divers whose premise is akin to having a Gundam MMO. In all honesty, I gave each a try, finished beginning G because it's a short overall series, but really couldn't get into more than a few episodes of the others, as they are definitely aimed towards children. On the one hand, I don't find these particularly good, but on the other hand, the fact they provide representation for the gunplay you can buy, while also creating new designs that you can buy the models of, to be quite impressive. Although for me, Gunpla has never been my passion point within the Gundam universe, having built a few myself, I definitely understand the appeal. There is a strange mixed sense of zen and concentration that seemingly melts the clock away. With this video, I hope I have been able to provide you a little bit more insight as a consumer to what Gunpla can offer. And as I am far from being a master of building, I definitely suggest that you explore the wide array of fantastic Gunpla building channels. 
Now then, with the largest chunks of the Gundam dictionary out of the way, next time we'll explore some of the more classic standalone Gundam shows, including G Gundam, Wing, After War, and Turn A. Thanks for watching. I hope everyone enjoyed this video. By my account, we'll be able to wrap up the Dummies Guide on Gundam in five parts to touch upon every major Gundam series. And fingers crossed, you guys will stick around for that. Like, subscribe, or comment, whatever works for you.